All right, this morning let's look at Luke chapter 11, and uh, we're going to uh, look at the Lord's Prayer, often called the Lord's Prayer. And uh, I heard this uh, uh, taught when I was, uh, uh, was probably an early teenager, and I've uh, just never forgot it. And it's uh, about prayer, and uh, it might be a review for some of you, and uh, if so, that's great. And if uh, not, then I really hope that it helps you. And uh, sticks with you the way that uh, it has uh, with me uh, through these uh, through these years. So um, <clears throat> we're going to be actually uh, looking at Luke, but we're going to be talking about the word acts today, A C T S, um, and we're going to use that as an acrostic to help uh, guide us into the different parts that uh, God gives us here with regard to our prayer life and what the content of our prayer can and should be. So we're going to read Luke 11, 1 through 4, and then using the word Acts, A-C-T-S, we'll look at four points, uh, four parts that our uh, prayers, uh, that our prayer life should have and can have, and then to give us a little bit of a, uh, a structure uh, maybe to our, to our prayer time and our prayer life. So Luke chapter 11, 1 through 4, And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And so we see here first in part of discipleship is learning to pray. There's a desire to pray. John's disciples were taught to pray by John. His disciples were taught to pray by Jesus. And if we are to be the disciples of the Lord, then we should also have that same desire to learn to pray, and we should go to the Lord to find out how to do it. And so he gives them a model for prayer in the next three verses. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And then he follows that up with some practical uh, illustrations about prayer. Gives some uh, illustrations, some parables uh, about uh, that that follow the, the rest of the chapter. Goes on about prayer as well. So this is just a little part of it. I encourage you to read the rest of this chapter and find more that the Lord taught about prayer. So I call this lesson the Acts, the A-C-T-S, the Acts of Prayer. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to look into your word. Thank you for giving us a pattern for our prayer life. And we realize as a part of uh, the basics of our Christian life, we know uh, about Bible reading, Bible study, and we also know how important prayer is. So I hope that today uh, these uh, truths can be helpful uh, to each one here, and that our prayer lives might be strengthened as a result. In your name we pray, amen. So ACTS, ACTS, is an acronym that is, uh, points uh, us to the Lord's Prayer, uh, as well as to other scriptures, and gives us uh, points, principles, so that we can utilize time maybe a little bit more effectively. Um, if you're like me, there are times when it's time to pray, and um, I don't have really um, a, I just, it's kind of, <clears throat> well, I wonder what I'm going to pray about today. That can turn into that if we're not careful. Another thing that our prayer time can turn into is just, all right, I have this long list of needs, so I sit down to pray, and God's going to hear this long list of needs. So we need to ask ourselves, is, is that all that there is to prayer? Is, is there more than that to prayer? Another thing that I think we ought to realize is there are times when the Lord just burdens our heart with something, and, and we pray, and this different parts of prayer, we're not even thinking about that. We're just praying to God. Uh, and so that's important, too, to not uh, get into just a, um, almost like a, a, a rote system of prayer. I'm going to do this, 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 this. It's almost like just going through a, a, a pattern. And I don't think that that really uh, is, is the type of prayer the Lord's talking about here either. Jesus didn't mean for us every time we pray to just repeat these words. That's what uh, some religions teach, that when you pray, you just say the words here. This is the Lord's Prayer. You just say those words, and then you're done praying. That's definitely not what the Lord taught. 
This is a model prayer. Uh, some people point out the fact that the Lord's Prayer really is in John 17. When Jesus is near the cross, he's near death, and he's praying for that entire chapter. Uh, that's uh, maybe a, a more uh, a better example of what the Lord uh, directed us and how to pray. This is a model prayer, but this has got components that are important for us to follow. And we're going to look at these different aspects here today. This has been used, this ACTS has been used by decades by many Christians. And it's been a blessing and a help uh, to them. Hopefully it will help today. So we're going to get right into it. The letter A stands for adoration. And uh, we, from that word, we get the word adore. And uh, when we think about that, that can be uh, the kind of thing maybe that we think about like a, a mom adoring her child or something like that. But it really means more than that. Uh, we have a Christmas uh, carol, right? Oh, come let us adore him, Christ the Lord. And to adore someone is pretty simple. It means to go near them, to think about them, to recognize who they are to appreciate them for who they are. This adoration means uh, acknowledging the person of God. And <clears throat> that might sound... Um, cool. But it, we would do well in our lives as Christians and, and as children of God to learn more about Him. Uh, the verse here says, Be thy... Name our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed, sanctified, be your name. He's just thinking about the very name of God. What about God? Who are we talking to when we pray? We're talking to the one who's perfectly holy, the one who knows everything, even all the problems that we have lined up, ready to talk to us all about those. We're talking to the one that has all power in everything in the world. He knows everything. He's everywhere. He's all present. He's holy. He's righteous. He's just. He's merciful. This is the one that we are taking our time with. It's not just, okay, here's 15 minutes for you, God, then I'm going to get to the real important part of my day, which is my to-do list. No, it's, it, that, that's, that's a recipe for a pretty miserable Christian life, really. So, adoration. We begin to see the privilege that we have to even know who God is. Many people don't have the privilege right now to, to know God, and yet we do. And so our prayer here, this model prayer, starts out with that mindset. It's a privilege to come to the one who knows all, even about me. And, and it's all powerful, even in my life. The one who has the plan and the purpose for my life. So this dedicates ourselves to God, not just with our words, but by, with our will, our heart. In fact, um, <clears throat> adoring God, is, it's really commanded throughout all the Psalms. David, as a shepherd, spent a lot of his life outdoors. So he had the great privilege when he was on the hillsides, even at night, with his flock to look up in the clear sky. Do you ever do that? And does it ever just stop and amaze you? It amazes me. It puts me in my place. Sometimes after a long day I'll, and the night's clear, I'll look up there and I'll think, what am I? <laughs> look at that. Thank you, Lord, that you've included me as a part of your plan. I think David, as a shepherd, looked up there and he said things like, the heavens declare the glory of God. He, he got to realize what a privilege that us as this little tiny part of this huge creation that God cares about us, that he knows us, and that uh, we're a part of his plan. It puts it in perspective. So adoration is the A of the acrostic acts, and that's a good way to start off our time with the Lord rather than to rush right into all the things that we need when I know we need things and I know we have burdens and there are problems that the Lord wants to hear. But I think he also wants us to recognize who he is. And so A is adoration. The letter is uh, for confession. And we see that <clears throat> here in our verse 4. Forgive us our sins for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. 
So confession. Uh, of course, the Bible says that uh, if we regard iniquity in our heart, the Lord cannot hear us. So part of prayer is cleaning ourselves out of the sin that we've either willingly or uh, unknowingly let come into our life during uh, that day. During prayer times, things will come to our mind that are not very pleasant to recall. One of the worst things we can do is just try to push that away and ignore that. That's really what prayers to come to God and to let our mind bring those things up to be convicted about our sins and our failure where we've not been truthful, we've exaggerated or missed opportunities. And this will bring sorrow. And that's not bad either. Godly sorrow, the Bible says, works repentance. It's all right to be sorrowful. It's good. Uh, we're not perfect, and we're not going to be perfect. And when we come before God, it would be unusual for us to come before the all-holy God and not have our sins brought to our mind. If we recognize and remember who we are, it'd be unusual for that not to happen. So this calls us to deal with those sins and then to make restitution where we can and need to, seeking forgiveness of God and that's often seeking forgiveness of others. And that's a good thing, too, because that keeps the line clear between us and God. That keeps the line clear between us and our Christian brothers. So we want to keep track of these things that God brings to our mind. And we learn that God will forgive all my sins. That's why Jesus came to die on the cross, didn't he? He came to forgive and wash away all of our sins. And if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we have a great opportunity to leave that prayer time, not only remembering and knowing who God is, putting our life and everything in perspective, but to be clean, clean mind, clean conscience, clean heart, and, uh, and then ready to go take care of things that we need to with other people. And uh, this is a great opportunity Confession helps us be accountable one to another. We simply can't grow in the Lord with unconfessed sin. We can't. And so the C of Acts is very important that we stop right there. We don't want to cut our communion off with God. The third letter is T, and this stands for thanksgiving. Not only here is it alluded to where it talks about um, the... Uh, uh, um, part thy, thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever another uh, cross reference there but also throughout scripture we know uh, in everything give thanks uh, we know in uh, Philippians 4 6 be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto God in our prayer life we have an opportunity to express our thankfulness for all that God has done for us we have an opportunity to be grateful, to review his mercy on our life. Every one of us was born in sin, ultimately faced an eternity in hell. Every single one of us in this room, because we were born sinners. And if there's one thing we can and should be excited to thank God for every day, it is for our salvation. It is for God's gift. It's for his wonderful plan that started long before you and I were born, which was an opportunity for you to be saved. Know him. Thankful not just for that, but for the mercies that God says are new every day. Yesterday could have been terrible, could have been uh, bad, could have really messed up. But God says every morning when you get up, he has mercy for that day ready for you. And we can thank God that his mercies are renewed every day. In other words, he knows that we live day by day. And he knows that our lives in the day by day struggle and the problems and the difficulty and the sin can wear us down. Which is why he said, every day, new mercy. Daily bread for that day from the Bible. Daily bread, yes. New mercies from him for that day too. We don't have to live 
in the mess that was yesterday or last week or the last month. God daily with new mercy. It will refresh our purpose in life. Every one of us have a purpose in God's eyes for, for today, for our future. Every single one of us. And, and, and thanking God and, and re uh, receiving his daily mercy brings that purpose back into perspective. Our attitudes get conformed to his will. So God has been with us all through the day, all through the nights, even through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. That prayer time is an opportunity to thank God for that. And then the S is supplication. And this is bringing our requests to God. We see that again uh, here in our passage. Give us <clears throat> day by day our daily bread. That reminds us of the children of Israel when they were in Egypt. God said, I'll give you your bread. It's going to come every day. It's going to come once a day. And uh, don't save it up. You need bread every day. And that's the manna that came down each day. And so we have the same principle here. Give us day by day our daily bread. I think that's physical bread. I think that's also uh, what we need to feed our souls. So this is our requests being made to God. Our petitions. Uh, it's not only seeking our own needs, but also... Pastor Parrish alluded to this the other uh, evening when he preached on intercession. Our needs and the needs of others. That's what the Lord uh, expects us to pray for and what we have the opportunity to pray for. Do you know anybody in your life that has needs? Yes. What's the n first step in helping them solve those needs? What's the first step? It's not our own effort. It's taking them to the Lord. And the Lord then will give us direction and will challenge us. And if we're praying for others, we will be doing things for others after that prayer is done. And if we're confessing our sins, we will be humbled. We will be um, seeking forgiveness when we need to. So really, our prayer life governs our, all of our actions. It's the foundation for all, of, all the actions that we have in life. So, sharing our requests before God um, uh, is uh, this letter S, supplication. This teaches us to depend on Him. And you know, in America, it's easy to not do that. It's easy to be the self-made person or just depend on ourselves. Just, I have everything lined up that I need for any problem. I have all this planned out. And it's good to have plans. It's good to be prepared. But... Man, it, it, God wouldn't have to t take that much for all that preparation to be gone, pulled right out from underneath of us. Um, we depend on God. Not I mean, we depend on God. We depend on God in reality. And uh, taking our supplications to God will uh, put us in this proper uh Position A well-balanced prayer life includes others' needs as well as, as your own. Praying for others, intercession. John chapter 17. So, supplication. This is where uh, it's good to make a prayer list, even if it starts off with something so small as a three-by-five card. Maybe it will grow from there, but a prayer list. These are things that should pray for every day. So, for instance, let's say you're a, uh, a man and you have, and you have ch children and you have relatives that are lost and you have some ministry here in the church. Those are all important things that, that are a part of our supplication. I pray for my wife. Pray for my children. What about praying for my children? Not just general, but... Pray that they, they gain in character. Pray that I can have wisdom when I deal with their problems. I pray for their future husband and wife, that God would direct them. God would keep their heart soft and be godly. Heard that uh, taught uh, Thursday night as well. And then for your ministry, is there anybody you know that's lost? Anybody you know that's lost? 
No, this is time to pray for them. And, and not just every once in a while, but when we take our request to the Lord and, and we have a plan at least of generally how to pray and how to organize our prayer life, I think we can be more effective. And I think we can and, and cover these areas that are important. Uh, pray for others as their needs come up. Pray for your leaders, missionaries. Pray for our country, government officials, God's guidance, wisdom, opportunities. Be specific and, and be sincere and be consistent. Hey, let's try this. Oh, the next day. What was that list? What was that? What was that, uh, what was that word he said? To school, I forget. <laughs> studying Acts right now with Pastor Volan, right? So it'll at least it'll remind you for a while about that. Um, but to, to turn it into a um, robotic thing, I'm not talking about that. All right, that, that's uh, rote prayer. That's Catholicism would teach that type of thing. I'm not talking about that. We're talking about coming to God, recognizing who he is, adoring him, worshiping him, recognizing his, his, his traits, who I'm praying to, and then confessing the sin, getting the heart clean, mind clean. This world will wear us down. We need to keep our heart and our mind clean and right. And then thanking God for everything. And then bringing our supplications, our requests to him, for ourselves, for others, for those that we have responsibility to. And I'll just uh, close here with uh, about uh, 12 summary thoughts about uh, the ACTS uh, guide uh, for prayer. The Lord's Prayer and this guide that comes from it help us center us and keep us on track. Do you ever get off to pray? Maybe it's just me. Sit down to pray and how did I start thinking about a basketball game? What did, what did my mind just do to me? I got off track. You ever talk to uh, somebody and they change the subject all the time? God probably hears us do that sometimes. But maybe, maybe just me. Like, whoa, I started there and I ended up hmm, not at the same place. Easy to do. Our minds are prone to wander, aren't they? I mean, practically, they're prone to wander. And so to uh, stay on track, really to discipline our mind is what it boils down to. It's, it's not easy, but we can do it and we, if we stick at it. Uh, so uh, keeping us on track in our prayers, number one. Secondly, um, <clears throat> uh, it's good to foresee your day by praying with the Lord. So you start your day in prayer so you and the Lord are going through this day together. He walks with me. He talks with me. Uh, he's, he's my... Uh, uh, comforter, he's my Pericles, one that stands beside me. You and the Lord are going to go through this day together. And you know, even if there's big problems ahead of you, that's a comforting thought to know, I'm not on this one all by myself. These decisions aren't completely up to me. I've got the Lord here with me uh, to go through this day. Thirdly, remember that prayer is not just a way to get what we ask for. It is also a way to line us up with God. In other words, Prayer lines us up with God's will. Sometimes it's, God, I need this or help me here. When God is saying, well, I want you lined up. I want you over here by me so you can see things from a different perspective. It might change what we pray for a little bit then too. So prayer lines us up with God. Fourth, we can have confidence that our prayers are heard and answered. There's lots of Bible verses that talk about God's promises to hear and answer our prayer. And when we pray, uh, those are verses that will bring uh, us to confidence in God. And then uh, fifthly, <clears throat> it's good to spend time with God when we first get up uh, to look over our day and to seek his help. And then to spend some time with him before we go to bed. Uh, and Daniel uh, was uh, well used of God. He had a habit of praying to God three times a day. And then uh, one uh, Christian uh, general from about 150 years ago, someone asked him how he was so disciplined in his Christian life. He said, 
Every time that I bring a glass of water up to my mouth, I've determined I'm going to pray every time that I take a drink of water. That'll help me to pray throughout the day. And every time that I send a letter in the mail, I don't know if people do that anymore. Every time we send, click send for an email, uh, every time we send a letter in the mail, he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray that the Lord blesses that letter and uses that. So he had these things throughout the day that God had directed him. And so that's how he kept in tune with God throughout the day. Discipline. Number six is to simply concentrate on God. A concentration and focus, I think, are two things that are probably our generation is losing pretty rapidly. The ability just to concentrate and to focus, whether the Bible meditate, that is, uh, that is a shame that that's getting lost. But um, the results or the benefits from meditation are, uh, are many. So um, focus on God. Seven, seek to free your mind of worry and distractions. And that is definitely easier said than done. I understand that. But seek to free your mind from worry. That worry is not going to accomplish anything. We're warned about that. Uh, in scripture about worrying about the next day or worrying about our uh, uh, food, drink, our raiment, worrying about uh, uh, be careful for nothing is, is what Paul said. And he had plenty to worry about in jail in Rome when he wrote Philippians. He had plenty to worry about. But he said, be careful for nothing. In other words, be anxious. Be anxious about nothing. So that's going to take time and practice for all of us. But it can be done. If God says for us to do it, it can be done. And it'll help us. Number eight, read a Bible passage and use that passage as a prompter for prayer. Let the Bible stir your heart up. One missionary, I think it might have been George Mueller, said, I read the Bible until the Lord brings my heart into a mindset for prayer, and then I pray. And certainly God's Word would direct us that way. Number nine, find a place, quiet place, where there are no distractions. If you have kids in the house, good luck. <laughs> Look real long and hard for that. Uh, quiet place, no distractions, that's important. Number ten, use the Lord's Prayer here in Luke as a model, not as an actual prayer. Um, we're not trying to just repeat something um, as a formal uh, prayer we're trying to pray what the Lord's put on our heart. So this is a model, not the actual prayer to be prayed. Number 11, two last things here. We end all of our prayers with the word amen. The word amen means so be it. In other words, when we say amen, we're ending our prayer with this confident statement that what we've prayed God has heard and God is going to answer. So let your amen be more than just, oh yeah, I always say that when I finish my prayer. Let your amen be, hey, I believe that. I believe it. I've prayed this, and, and, and the Lord's heard me. Amen. Now let it happen. Let it take place. It's confidence in God and His love for us. And then, lastly, one day when we get to heaven and we realize all that prayer did on this earth, we'll probably be amazed at how God used the prayers of his people. On the other hand, we also might be ashamed of what we missed by not really praying uh, on this earth. I think it would work both ways. We can be really amazed at what God did through prayer. And I think we'll probably hang our heads at what we missed out on because either we didn't pray, prayed half-hearted, prayed inconsistently, we uh, were distracted or whatever reason uh, that hinders our prayers. So prayer life's important, and hopefully the ACTS, uh, the acts of prayer, will be a blessing for you. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Bless our time and church to follow. Thank you for your word, and I pray, Lord, that we would be always challenged by it. In your name we pray. Amen.